Good morning. And welcome to worship at the First Congregational Church of Woodstock, where whoever you are, wherever you find yourself on your life or spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Today is the first Sunday of, of the month, and on the first Sunday, we celebrate communion. And you need not belong to this church or any other church to fully participate in this graceful, wonderful feast in which we celebrate God's love. That's what it means to be inclusive and to be this particular community which is on this journey to find out how to be God's people in this time and in this place for tomorrow. If you are visiting with us or you have an update to your contact information, I do invite you to find a connection card. There should be one in the pew. If you don't, you can talk to one of the deacons and they can get you one. You can update your contact information. You can get added to our paper or our electronic newsletter. And if you've got a question or a prayer request, you can add that to the back of the card. And you can, again, give that to one of our worship leaders, to our deacons, to myself during coffee hour. You can put it in one of the offering plates at either of the entrances or exits as you leave. Will you join me for our opening prayer? Gracious God, your amazing love extends through all time and space to all parts of your creation which you created and called good. You made a covenant with Noah and his family, putting a rainbow in the sky to symbolize your promise of love and blessing to every living creature and to all successive generations. You made a covenant with Abraham and Sarah, blessing them and their descendants throughout all the generations. You made a covenant with Moses and the Israelite peoples to all generations, giving them the Ten Commandments and challenging them to choose life. In Jesus, you invite us to enter into a new covenant in communion with all who seek to be faithful to you. As people of faith, we are called into covenant. Your covenant of faithfulness and love extends to the whole creation. We pray for the healing of the earth, that present and future generations may enjoy the fruit of creation and continue to glorify and praise you. Amen. I'm going to invite you to rise up for this song. Good it's idea. a fun opening song. And um, there are um, movements and times to clap. So uh, Maria will lead us. So here's the chorus. Rise and shine and give God your glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God your glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God your glory, glory, children of the world. The Lord said to Noah, there's going to be a bloody, bloody Lord said to Noah, there's going to be a bloody, bloody, get those children out of the muddy, muddy children of the Lord. So Noah, he built them, he built them an arky, arky, Noah, he built them, he built them an arky, arky, made it out of hickory, barky, barky, children of the Lord. The animals, they came on, they came on by twosies, twosies, animals. They came on, they came on by twosies, twosies, elephants and kangaroosies, roosies, children of the world. So rise and shine and give God your glory, glory, rise and shine and give God your glory, glory, rise. Rained and poured for forty daisies, daisies, rain and poured for forty daisies, daisies, nearly drove those animals crazy, crazy children of the Lord. The sun came out and dried up the landy, landy sun came out and dried up the landy, landy every Fine and dandy, dandy children of the Lord. Now 
that is the end, the end of my story, story, that is the end, the end of my story, story, everything is hunky-dory, dory, children of the Lord. So rise and shine, and give God your glory, glory, rise and shine, and give God your glory, glory, rise and shine, and give God your glory, glory, children of the Lord. We continue to hold in our hearts everyone who one way or another is struggling and feels um, that they are somehow outside of God's story. Um, we continue to hold in our prayers all who are breaking free of various kinds of addictions, um, those who are trying to heal from illnesses of the body, the mind, and the spirit. And, um, you know, though I'm a runner and I appreciate these warmer days in November, um, an incredible prayer for God's creation because uh, um, it's scary when it's this warm in November. Um, and so uh, prayers that um, we can find it within ourselves as the human race to roll back the clocks of the damage that we've done to God's great creation. Let us join together in the spirit of prayer, and we will end um, using the Lord's Prayer. And I invite you to use whatever language or words or version that you are comfortable Creator God, we come to you on this beautiful day that you have made, and we are reminded of your love for each and all of us, for every one of us, for the fullness of all of your creation. And we give you thanks on this day. We give you thanks for the care that we find in the love that is expressed in the prayers that we hear within this congregation, the love and the care that we show for one another, the love and the care that you have for us that is reflected through us. We ask that you continue to lift up and hold all those who are ill and struggling with those illnesses of the mind, the body, and the spirit, that you be with us as a community, as a congregation, as a nation, as the human family, that you continue to inspire us and guide us to move beyond the ways of fear and find our ways back into reflecting your covenant of love and grace and mercy and trust. We know, Creator God, that you work through all things in strange ways and mysterious ways to help lead us forward, even when the way is difficult or uncertain or messy um, or we're filled with doubt. And so um, we ask that you just hold us in our own challenges this day. We remember that you are the God of love because you came to us in the one, Jesus, your son, who showed us that your way is always the way of love and gave us this prayer that we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So this is a new prayer response for the next few weeks, so I want to teach it to you. And I'm going to teach the men their part first. Your men's part goes like this. Thanks to our newly installed pastor, Reverend Kevin Downer, and this worship community. 
We give thanks to our music ministry and all the people who share their gifts each week in worship. Would you please pray with me? Loving God, open our heart and mind to these holy words and how they may speak to us today in our own lives. Amen. Our first reading today is from Genesis, chapter 9, chapter nine verses 8 through 15 in the Inclusive Bible. God said to Noah and his family, I hereby establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that lives on the earth. I hereby establish my covenant with you. All flesh will never again be swept away by the waters of the flood. Never again will a flood destroy all the earth. Then God said, Here is the sign of the covenant between me and you, and every living creature for your ageless generations. I set my bow in the clouds, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, my bow will appear in the clouds. Then I will remember the covenant that is between me and you and every living creature. Our second reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 67 through 79, also of the Inclusive Bible. Shortly after the birth of John the Baptist, his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. Blessed are you, the Most High God of Israel, for you have, in, you have visited and redeemed your people. You have raised up a mighty Savior for us of the house of David, as you promised through your prophets. You have shown mercy to our ancestors by remembering the holy covenant you made with them, the oath you swore to Sarah and Abraham, granting that we, delivered from the hands of our enemies, might serve you without fear in holiness and justice, in, in your presence all our days. And you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, and you'll go before our God to prepare the way for the promised one, giving the people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Such is the tender mercy of our God, who from on high will bring the rising sun to visit us, to give light to those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. May these words comfort, challenge, and inspire us. Thanks be to God. So God puts this rainbow in the, fly, in the, in the sky, right? And makes this, this covenant with Noah. Not just with Noah, right? With all the created beings. God's promises for everybody and everything, for all of creation. God's promise to, to have this new beginning, the beginning of a whole new way of being. To, to wash away all the ways of fear. And God promises, promises that whenever God sees the rainbow in the sky, God will pause and reflect and not use God's power in some way to wipe away all of the living beings on the earth ever again. Y'all know the story, right? God speaks to Noah, and Noah starts to build an ark. People laugh and snicker at him. And yet Noah continues, tap, 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 building and building and building this ark in hope. It's nice and bright and sunny, and then the clouds roll in, and the rain comes down, and the waters rise, and then, and then people kind of figure out when it's too late. Noah after 40 days and 40 nights, and the rain stops, right? The sun comes out, sends out a dove. You know the story. And at first, it comes back. And Noah's heartbroken. Like God was heartbroken before the rain came. And then, in a little while, Noah sends out another dove. And it comes back with a little piece of an olive branch that then gives Noah hope. And the sun comes out and the waters dry up and eventually, eventually, when the 
door comes down. And as Noah and his family and all the families of the earth prepare to leave the ark, God makes this promise, puts the rainbow in the sky. And we hear from the words of Zechariah. Zechariah is, 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 is John the Baptist's father. We often talk about this text at the beginning of the year. It is at, at the dedication of John the Baptist where, where they bring John into the temple and, 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 and Zechariah has actually been silenced by God's angel for months and months and months on end. And finally, when Zechariah speaks at the dedication of his child, he declares that God is in the process of fulfilling Filling God's covenant, the ancient covenant with the people, with Abraham and Sarah, that goes back thousands of years. The fulfillment has come because God has promised the Messiah who is about to emerge. Now, in a couple of weeks, we're going to tell that story, right? That's the Christmas story. That's the coming of Jesus. Jesus who fulfills the old covenant and ushers in a new beginning under the new covenant, a covenant of grace. So, if you take a look throughout all the scriptures, for all the things that we could be talking about, covenant is kind of a big deal. It's there in the beginning, when, when, when God declares, right? With, with Noah, and all the people of the earth, all the families of the earth, all of the living beings, God makes a promise, not just with people, but with all of creation. Abraham and Sarah, and then with Moses and the people who are fleeing Pharaoh, with David, and then with Jesus. So what's a covenant? And how is a covenant, how is a covenant similar to the other kinds of agreements that we may make? And why may covenants matter to us today? What do you think? What's a covenant? A promise? An agreement, commitment, a relationship. There we go. How is a covenant different than a contract? It's relational. How is a covenant different than contract? No consider co contracts are transactional. It's about some sort of an exchange. Covenant is about the promise of how we are going to be with each other. Contracts are about doing. Covenants are about being with one another in a particular way. That way is what? Love. love. God's love. God's love. Not something that, that, that compromises love. Not the love which is anchored and based in fear. Not the things that we use for love. Not the hallmark card love that we, we send on Valentine's Day. But God's love for all creation, this love that is truly for all of creation, that leads us forward, that leads us into ways that are hopeful and just and loving and graceful and merciful and forgiving. Isn't that the kind of relationship that God has for us? with ourselves and with others, with creation and with our creator. On the front of your worship bulletin, there is what looks really good in color, a rainbow. <laughs> but this is part of what happens, right? Sometimes what looks really, really good doesn't just kind of quite pan out the way that we thought it was going to be. And that's where grace and mercy and hope and love comes in. But I also think that part of the reason why God puts this rainbow up in the clouds Right? Think about it within your own relationships, within our own communities, within our own nations. How, how we have expectations of others. And when others don't, 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 don't behave the way that we expect, how that kind of clouds our judgment. How all of a sudden, instead of being able to see the multitude of rainbow colors, we see everything in black and white. And possibly shades of gray. But the color, the hope, the joy, the love, the beauty of tomorrow has gone away. I'm going to encourage you to take out a pencil, take out a pen. You might find a golf pencil in the pews. 
If you're watching at home, then draw a rainbow. But here's what I'm going to encourage you right now. On that rainbow, I want you to write the attributes of what God's protection of love in the covenant looks like for us. Love. Write love on the rainbow. Write justice on the rainbow. Write grace and mercy and forgiveness. And then write, in all caps, the biggest word of all. What's the difference between a contract and a covenant? Relationship, that's good. You can write that as well. That's good. Write relationships. But, but there's another word that we haven't said yet, and it's really critical because it is missing in our world. It is missing in so much. And it is, I believe, the number one reason why communities, even when they think that they're communities in Christ, fail to walk in the ways of God's love. Grace is good. Kindness is better. Co trust. Compassion is good, too. All of these are really good words. Write them on the rainbow. Trust. Capital letters. T-R-U-S-T. Why? Here's why. Because there's a little rock underneath that rainbow, and I want you to draw a stick figure and call it you. Because why? The number one difference between covenant and contract, as far as I'm concerned, is not only is it relational, but covenants are based on trust. How we will trust one another in relationship as we walk this journey of uncertainty together. Contracts are all based on what? Lack of trust. It's all about what? Terms and conditions. And anything that has happened bad before, what? We go and put another clause in. We want to minimize the downside, right? Think about that. You go into the store and you get a cell phone and you got a 25-page document that you need a lawyer's degree in order to understand, right? All that fine print when you buy a card that nobody ever reads and we probably ought to. What about the credit cards, right? They give themselves permission to charge you exorbitant rates and penalties if you happen to miss one payment or the date the money is due by just an hour or two. Contracts are not based in trust. God's covenant relationships are, and God calls us to be the people of God, to live in ways that trust. For me, relationship is always in four dimensions. For me, love needs to be in four dimensions. And for me, trust needs to be found and formed and forged in four dimensions as well. It means trusting ourselves. How many of you sometimes, you, 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 you bad talk yourselves, you talk yourself down, you use negative speak. You don't trust yourselves. God created you as a child of love. God created you in the image of God. God has given you everything that you need in order to be exactly who God needs you to be. Trust yourself. We live in a world that is based in fear. And because we live so much steeped in this ocean of fear, you know, on that ocean, on the other side of the rainbow, you can write fear. You can write a world of worry. You can write the chaos of creation. It is all the stuff that threatens to sweep us away. It is the violence that we find within the world. We live steeped in an ocean of fear. Turn on your TV, look at the internet, look at your news feed, look at Facebook and what other people are tweeting and twitting, and, and, and it's all based in fear. It's about the fear of our tribe versus the other. It's about the fear that somebody might get ahead and not me. The fear that we might actually welcome somebody at the table, and because we welcome somebody else at the table, I might not have enough. It's fear. Everything that fragments us as humanity, as communities, as us being who God has called us to be, it is anchored and based in fear, not in trusting ourselves or trusting others. Now look, you can grant trust and the world happens. And some people, some people will just take advantage of that. But to not trust, Reagan said great, trust but verify. To not trust is for us to leave ourselves in the quagmire of a world of worry, in fear. 
We are children of the living God. We are to meet people where they are on the journey. To trust that people act with the goodness of their hearts, even when the impact of their intent kind of goes sideways, oftentimes unintentionally. We need to open ourselves up and listen. We need to trust that God created all that ever was. Creation is good. Yeah, the night can be scary and you walk in the woods and you hear funny sounds. But creation at the end of the, of the day is not out to get you. God has populated all creation with everything that is good in order for all of life to thrive. Our problem is that humanity has seen ourselves as being somehow exceptional, has forgotten that the first covenant that God makes in the Bible is with all of creation forever and for always. We are put into that garden of creation in order to be God's caretakers and stewards of all of God's creation. Creation isn't so much out to get us as we have been out to damage and get creation itself and to trust God. We all come from broken traditions and broken theologies, and we've heard all kinds of different theories. Let me tell you, hellfire and brimstone cells. It is so much easier to get people to conform to your ways when fear is at the heart of the God of your worship. But we don't worship the God of fear. We worship the God of love, that all people have been created in the image of God, made and called and given everything we need that even when people are different or have different opinions or come from things and problems from a different way, we need to trust that God is somehow working in us and through our questions and our challenges, helping us to be the body of Christ, to bring the light of God's hope into the messiness of the world in which we find ourselves. There was a time several years ago, I was called to go to a congregation. And in the time when I was called to go and be with the congregation, in the time that I arrived, I had a, a monthly call with uh, other, other, other um, clergy who were also working with transformational ministries around the world. And one of the individuals, a colleague who was on the call, she said, I heard, I heard that you were called to go to such and such a church. She said, I had considered that, and I knew because they were so broken. They were so conflicted. They were so hurtful to one another. She said, I knew that I didn't have the capacity to make that happen. I said, no. What is it that makes you think that you can go there and help that congregation? And I thought for a moment, and I said to her, I believe I can because I know that I can't. We are not sent on this journey alone. We are called to be present with one another and to trust one another enough that we bring the goodness of one another out into the room, that we listen deeply for God's spirit challenging us to move through all of the brokenness all of the missteps, all of the misunderstandings that one way or another we can find our way to be together, covenant at the beginning to be with one another, to become the people that God is calling us to be in this moment. I said, before I said that I would go, I asked the board and I asked the congregation what was the covenant that they were willing to step up to that would guide us on that journey? The covenant that we said just a couple of weeks ago when I was installed, for me, it's not just a bunch of words that are on the page. It is about the promises that we made as pastor and people and representatives of the Wyndham Association for us to be bound together at the beginning of the new beginning of this journey that we might open ourselves up to the glory of God's grace working within us that we might be this people of light and love and hope in the midst of this world of chaos 
in fear in doubt, that we might live as though the covenant that God has given to Noah in all creation means something, that we might live as though the promise that Jesus makes of grace and mercy and love and forgiveness extends to each and every one of us, and that it is our responsibility to extend that out to one another. When I went to that congregation, one of the first things that we did was we met in their social hall, and, and, and we called this meeting, and we said, we're just going to have a listening session. Just need to make space for people to share where they are and how they were hurt on the journey. It went on for like an hour and a half. There were like 45 people who showed up. We had this massively large circle, and everybody had a minute or two just to share how they saw where they were and how they felt on the journey. Just making that space to listen was the beginning of God's Holy Spirit to heal that congregation. I mean, listen, when I would go there the first couple of Sundays, you could literally see the three or four different factions because there would be a group sitting here and a group sitting there and nothing and no one in between. The first day I arrived at that congregation, I was greeted with a voicemail from a congregant I had never met, threatening to come and shoot up the place. 18 months of pain and prayer and hope and healing. And that congregation learned to move closer and to worship together, to sing songs of hope and to pray for one another, to learn how to covenant, to walk the walk that God was calling them to walk in that moment that they might be the people of God once more. Covenant matters. It's not just a bunch of words on the page. It is for us to learn within our own walk as individuals. If we are going to be in Christ, how is it that we live in love and trust and mercy and relationship? How do we extend grace and forgiveness for us to choose to sit firmly on that rock covered by God's love and to invite everybody in along with us on that journey? I shared this quote during one of the messages in August. It's, it's from David Baum, who for me has been the most influential theologian who's not a theologian, right? He's a physicist, the father of quantum mechanics. And yet he saw in the way that the smallest particles of the world related that there was something important for us to learn about how God is calling us into relationship. Like the smallest particles in the world reflect what the kinds of relationships that we as human beings are supposed to be creating. And what he said in explaining that was this. He said, love will go away if we can't communicate and share meaning. That between us, in order for the relationship to flow, we need to pause and listen and make the space in order to hear and to share the stories of those who are different. He says, however, if we can really communicate, then we will have fellowship, participation, friendship, and love growing and growing. Such an energy has been called communion. It is a kind of participation. The early Christian church had a Greek word, koinonia. It means community, the root of which is to participate, for us to participate with one another together on the journey. The idea of partaking the whole and taking part in it. Not merely the whole group, but the whole. What Bob is talking about is what I believe it looks like when we live in that covenant relationship. For us to use our presence in order to make place to first listen deeply to our heart, to God's spirit, talking within and through us. For us to use every challenge, every conflict as an opportunity for us to grow deeper, to see what it is that we have not seen, for us to be who it is that God is calling us yet to be. Because we live in a world which is populated with fear, which is populated with worry. And I believe that we exist and have been gathered together because we truly are called to live differently. The power.
power of the covenant is the power of us holding hands in times of uncertainty in walking together to face what comes at us, but doing so trusting that we will come with the right intent of heart, love for one another, expressing grace and mercy when we step on one another's toes, and that we will strive to listen to who God is calling us to be when we go out into the world holding hands and we do it together. Every covenant of God is written, informed on the promises that happen at the beginning of a new beginning. At the end of a crisis, even before we pick things up and dust ourselves off, God is there promising us that the sun will rise, that we will be inspired, and that God is with us as we journey. May God bless us because the journey is filled with uncertainty and potholes. And as we trip and we skip, may we find ways to dance together. Here's what we're going to do. So, so we have been, um, and Charlene and, and, and Bob are our stewardship team this year. And so thank you all for, for helping um, to guide us. Um, we've been collecting pledges. And so um, there's, a, there's a basket up here. Uh, which has all the pledges that we have received to date. If you have a pledge and you haven't actually brought it forward yet, I invite you to bring it up here that when we bless the gifts, um, we can also bless all of the pledges. If you didn't get a chance to pledge, it's not too late. Um, there are more forms. If you lost your form, just let us know. Um, we're going to continue to collect the pledges. Um, but, but we ask for the pledges, if you can, to come in sometime um, before the end of this month so that we can have a better understanding of, of how for us to create our budget. So, so if you do have a pledge as we sing the doxology, I am going to invite you um, to just bring them up. You can put them in the basket. Um, and if you would prefer and you have your pledge, but you don't, you, you're kind of like shy, you don't want to do that, um, then you can also just um, put it in the basket after worship service um, or bring it to the office. So um, with that, um, we thank you for all of the different gifts and many ways that you continue to help this ministry possible. And um, let us rise as we sing the doxology.
that is what the message of this table is all about. It's what covenant is all about, for us to find our way back in to full relationship with the God who created, creates each and every one of us in the image of God's love, for us to find our way to be creators of justice and joy. You know, if you drew that little stick figure, maybe right next to you on that rock, maybe just write justice and joy. And, and I think as we go off, you know, into the world, as, as God used the rainbow to remind God when God was about to maybe react instead of respond, maybe for us to use the images that we've drawn, those words that we put on the front of the bulletin, to ask ourselves that question. In the way that we are in relationship with ourselves and with one another, are we being the creators of God's justice and joy? Whoever you are, wherever you find yourself on your life or spiritual journey, you are welcome at this table. You need not belong to this church or to any church. Just desire a closer relationship with God, who is the creator of all that is, was, and ever shall be. May God be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to our God. It is right to always give God thanks and praise. We remember that even on the night when Christ was about to be betrayed, even then, when those would betray him and people would deny him and he knew what was about to unfold, he gathered the disciples together. They had a meal. He took the bread. He blessed it and gave thanks to God. And then he broke it open, as I believe he broke open his life, saying, take and eat each one of you. Do this in remembrance of me. It's like 
Here, have a part so that you can participate. I with you and you with me. And then, in a like manner, at the end of the meal, he took the cup. He blessed it. Again, he gave thanks to God. He passed it to all, all who were there, and said, take and drink, for this cup contains the new covenant that flows in and through my blood. It is given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Come, take, drink, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the great mystery. Every time that we gather together, every time that we break our hearts and our lives open, every time that we express grace and extend mercy, Christ becomes present within us and among us. And God's kingdom and love is glimpsed forever. Creator God, we ask that you continue to bless us and challenge us, that you transform us as you have transformed the grain of the field and the grape of the vine, that we too may become nourishment to heal our hurting humanity and to repair your broken world. We ask all these things in your many names. Amen. The deacons will come around and they will first share the bread. I encourage you to come, not because you must, but because you may. And so if you feel inclined, you are invited to um, take a piece of bread. Uh, we ask that you hold on to it to meditate as we um, wait. And then we will all consume the bread together um, as one community in God. My friends, the gifts of God given for you, take and eat. My friends, I invite you to drink the cup of forgiveness given for you. Creator God, we give you thanks for gathering us once again at this table. We ask that in this bread and in this juice that our spirits be nourished, that we have the energy and the strength to follow you wherever you lead on this journey, that we truly will find it within ourselves to trust, to trust ourselves and one another, to trust the goodness of your creation in the goodness of your love that we truly may in our time and in this place be creators of your justice and joy. We ask all these things in your many names. Amen. I now invite you to rise as you are able for our closing song, In the Midst of New Dimensions. We are doing three verses. They are listed there. I think it's one, three, and five.
I invite you to join in our shared benediction. You will find it in your bulletin, the words that are attributed to John Wesley. Do all the good you can in all the ways you can at all the times you can to all the people you can as long as you ever can. May we head out into the world and make this so as we be the church in these times in the ways God needs us to be. I now invite you to face one another, to look into the eyes and the smiles of those as we sing our closing alleluia, knowing that it is the eyes and the smile of God who is greeting you today. Mm -hmm.